Hi everyone, we're back and I just wanted to say wish you the best for 2013, a new year. Anyway, here we are again with the new news and one of the things we're going to talk about is called Let Us Rewind and Refine. And what this will involve is we're now going to celebrate our 100th video and we're going to take the trouble to go back and rewind the old videos and refine things of importance that can help you because we've got so many videos you may not even know where to start so at the very end I'm going to try to give you a few and tell you where to locate them for your learning pleasure. First I wanted to talk about hemodynamic monitoring. This is a very important topic. Hemodynamic refers to blood flow and we know that blood flows throughout the body. If you have never worked in intensive care, you may not have been exposed to things like a pulmonary artery catheter and things like the cardiac output, which is, you know, the, the pulmonary artery catheter is used for that purpose. And we do have a video called hemodynamic monitoring, especially for the new nurse, which will help you understand the purpose of hemodynamic monitoring what exactly happens with blood flow. We know that the heart pumps blood when a pulmonary artery catheter, which used to be called the swan gans, is put in place. It usually is put into the heart. The doctor inserts it through the chambers and it reads the different pressures. It even allows the doctor to know if the lungs are have, you know, filling up with too much fluid. Take the time to look at uh, hemodynamic monitoring the new nurse at dearnurses.org. This will be very helpful for you. Another topic I wanted to address, please excuse my voice, is um, two common signs which we find in patients who have brain injuries like subarachnoid hemorrhage and meningitis. They're called, one's Brzezinski's, the other's Koenig's. Um, Brzezinski's sign when the examiner flexes the patient's neck, the knees and the hips, flex at the same time. You have a lot of rigidity in these patients, patients with meningitis and with subarachnoid hemorrhages. In Koenig's sign, we see inability uh, to straighten the leg. You, you get the, the hamstring muscles. You have a lot of um, sensitivity in air, that area because of the nerve roots, very stiff. And that is, of course, uh, the inability to stretch the leg when the hip is flexed at a 30 degree angle. Please take the time to go to dearnurses.com and read that case study on meningitis and on um, subarachnoid hemorrhage and that will help you understand. Then we're going to talk a little about ICP monitoring. Some people may never have been exposed to, in fact, it's not just working in intensive care. There are many intensive cares that do not even have ICP monitoring because it's specially done for patients with brain injuries. And intracranial pressure monitoring is usually done when there is damage to the brain injury, whether it's injury due to trauma, whether it's due to um, like something like meningitis, but indications are whenever there's too much fluid building up in the ventricles, it has to be drained out. There's also um, another type of monitoring where the pressures are red, but the doctor uses conservative methods like uh, mannitol to pull off the extra fluid. And of course, in the new nurse, we do have intracranial pressure monitoring. Now, let me explain to you. If you would go to dearnurses.com, sessions 23 is wonderful learning about meningitis, Koenig's and Brzezinski signs. Sessions 25, stroke assessment, the cranial nerves as well. And sessions 33, ICU, CCU care, the basics. And if you would go to dearnurses.org, the new nurse, ICP monitoring. And these topics I've brought up to you because it seems like there is a great need for information on these topics. I hope you have a wonderful new year. Wishing you the best for 2013.